Here are 40 tips for new Monster Hunter Rise players. Number 1. There is no best weapon. This one is simple. While you may see some forums here and there, and they definitely will be the minority, where someone is claiming a weapon type is better than another, in Monster Hunter, all 14 weapon types are excellent. There is no best weapon type. Whichever one you are drawn to and have fun with will be the best for you. Simply put, some weapons will have more complex mechanics, which of course will take more time to learn. So don't worry too much about which weapon you choose, and of course you can always switch down the line. Number 2. Don't be overwhelmed by having to understand all the game's offerings. Monster Hunter to a new player can have a lot to understand at first glance, but you just have to make sure you keep the mindset of you don't need to understand everything straight away. Simply just follow the game's base story and you should naturally discover and explore what the game has to offer without it being overwhelming. Number 3. The Defender and Black Belt sets will make the base game story much, much easier, at least for the first half. So make sure to keep this in mind if you think the game is too easy. These sets were implemented for players to be able to breeze through the base game story to jump into the expansion sooner, and that is where the difficulty will start matching up again. Number 4. Sharpness has a strong correlation to the damage output of your weapon, so if you are bouncing off a monster, you most likely have a weapon that either has a base sharpness that's too low, or you need to simply just sharpen your weapon using the whetstone. Number 5. Don't be afraid to sheath reposition and dodge more with slower weapons, and of course this still is the same thing to remember for the faster weapons in the game, but I feel like you would more naturally dodge with those, for example the dual blades have a different type of dodge when you're in its demon mode, so naturally you will dodge more, but for weapons like the greatsword and the lance, don't be afraid to sheath and reposition if needed, and of course dodging is vital with these weapons as while they will hit harder, it will be much easier to get hit back. Number 6. Every time you inflict a status ailment like poison, sleep or paralysis, it will take longer the next time you try to inflict it. This is because the threshold increases each time you hit one of these effects, so if you put the monster to sleep for example, it will take even longer to put it to sleep again after it's woken up. Number 7. Blunt weapons can cause knockouts on monsters if you attack the head. If a monster has a tail that can be cut off, this can be done so by inflicting cutting damage on it, and of course that is done using the weapons that are bladed. If you are farming for an armor set or a weapon, be careful as there are some monster materials that are tied to part breaks. For example, some monsters may require you to get a headpiece, like a horn, which will of course require you to break their horn, which means inflicting damage on their head. Number 10. Blocking can be done with weapons that have shields or the greatsword, and this of course is tied to your stamina, so be super careful of that when deciding to block a monster's attack. And of course, the stronger the monster's attack is, the more stamina it will take up, and if you don't have enough stamina, then it will knock you over. Number 11. Learning to dodge and position well is more important than learning the weapon initially, as of course, if you're dead, you're not going to be able to use your weapon, so making sure you're very good with dodging a monster and positioning well to time your attacks, this will definitely speed up how quickly you learn a weapon. Number 12. While 4 players can be involved in a hunt, solo training is probably something you would want to do from the get go, as this will make it so you don't rely on other monster hunter players to get a quest completed. Number 13. So monsters do have tails for certain attacks, which you definitely should look out for when observing their move patterns, and that is key to becoming a better Monster Hunter player. Number 14 is a bit of a simple one, and by watching this video you're kind of already doing it, but it's simply don't be afraid to ask for help. Monster Hunter players, for the most part, are very nice people, and we love to help out the newer players that are joining the franchise especially if they are willing to learn and eager to learn more about this amazing franchise, so make sure to ask if needed. Number 15. 
Remember to eat before going on quests as this can provide you with very useful buffs ranging from stamina and health increases to being able to withstand an attack that would have killed you in one hit. Number 16. Unlock the Argosy quickly as this will help with farming items. If you are unsure as to how to unlock the Argosy, there are many guides online to help you do so. Number 17. Train up spare bodies as you go as this will improve how your farm works meaning you can farm the useful materials very easily such as mushrooms and herbs. Number 18. Set up and learn to use the radio menu as it makes item usage much easier in battles. This can be done via your settings and this will make it way easier when you're having to quickly use a mega potion or max potion instead of scrolling through your items you can simply flick to it on your circular menu. Number 19 the training area. This area is extremely helpful in learning weapons and in general just learning the mechanics of the game which leads into number 20 which is wirebug training and this could go a long way as the wirebug is extremely useful as it can help you recover quickly when getting knocked down as well as being able to reach certain areas very quickly. Number 21 Multiplayer quests will scale for player count so be careful of this when going into a quest as if you ha do have 4 players the monster's health will be scaled to 4 players so don't be expecting it to go down quickly. Number 22 Item loadouts can be used to quickly restock a specific set of items in your inventory. This will simply save you a lot of time as instead of having to restock manually you can just scroll down to your loadout and apply it to your inventory. Number 23, so just like with item loadouts you can have equipment loadouts to quickly switch between different armor sets and weapons. Number 24, watch your health and stamina carefully during a battle. This is very easy to do in the heat of a battle. You may not be watching your stamina enough when using dual blades for example and not be able to dodge out of the way of a monster's attack that may or may not one shot you. So you want to be super careful to make sure that you have enough stamina to at least dodge once at the very least and of course with your health to make sure it is as high as you possibly can make it at all times to avoid being one shot once again. Number 25. Honey is your best friend. Mega potions can be extremely useful in a monster hunter and it is pretty much a staple of most people's inventory. So make sure to get your honey farm going as soon as possible. And of course this links back to the other tip about training up your spare buddies as you go as your farm will, will of course correlate to the levels of your buddies. The higher the level the better your farm will grow whatever you choose it to grow. And of course, honey is what we want a lot of, so make sure to be doing both of these tips as you progress throughout the game, as mega potions will be extremely, extremely useful to you for most, if not all, of your monster hunter experience. Number 26. As you progress and explore, more camps will become available to you for fast travelling. And this links into our next tip, which is number 27, which is special requests will help a lot with quality of life. And the camps that we just talked about will pop up as special requests once you discover their locations. Number 28. Palamutes offer many benefits that you may not see at first glance. Of course, they do attack the monster, which is pretty much what you will always see in them doing, but they do also offer you fast traversal if you choose to ride them, as well as being able to use items on the move, and this can be extremely handy if you're wanting to sharpen your weapon when in the same area as a monster, as you can simply get on them and ride around while you sharpen your weapon, meaning the monster has a harder time in being able to hit you. Number 29, as with Palamutes, Palakos also have their benefits, primarily being them being able to give you status effects that can buff your attack, buff defense and even heal you at the most clutch times which is definitely something to be taking a note of as it can be very useful to have these extra benefits. Number 30, collect as you go. So this is pretty much if you are on a quest and you're going towards a monster, for example say you're riding a Palamute 
through a certain area towards a monster. If you do see a mining node, feel free to go quickly gather those materials and then continue on your way as you don't know when you might need those materials and it just helps you from having to load up an expedition quest later down the line just to go farm those materials when you could have done it while hunting a monster on a different quest. Number 31. This may sound like an obvious one but some players may just see it and not think too much about it. Be sure to collect your free items from the supply chest as this will always spawn at the beginning of a quest at your base camp. Number 32. Single player quests in the village and multiplayer quests in the gathering hub are separate and the high rank difficulty is exclusive to the gathering hub. Number 33. Upgrade as you see fit. For example, if you have a weapon that you can get an upgrade for, feel free to get it. And as for upgrading your armor, if you are able to do so, feel free to, or you could wait until you feel you're getting hit too hard for your liking, and then you can go see if you can upgrade anything. And just be sure, of course, this is a little bonus tip, don't be hoarding all your armor spheres, as you will eventually get such a massive influx of them, you will not know what to do with them, and you would have feel like you just made the game more difficult for yourself unnecessarily. Number 34, quests have timers. So be sure to make note of this as some quests, or I should say most quests, will have a 15 minute timer and a few will have a shorter time, so make sure you're aware of that. Number 35, wirebugs can take you to hidden areas and resources and in some cases they are mandatory to do so. Number 36, Pick up spirit birds as you go to buff your stats in a quest. These are temporary to a given quest, so be sure to learn where these can spawn in, as they can be very handy and very easy to pick up on your way to hunt a monster. Number 37. Yellow numbers when you are attacking a monster means you are hitting a weak spot. Number 38. The tent at a base camp is extremely useful in a quest. If you forget to eat, you can eat in there. If you forget to bring a certain item, you can restock in there. And you can also change your equipment in there. So it's pretty much removing the need to prepare before a hunt, assuming you don't really care too much about the timer. Number 39. Capturing is always an option for all monsters except for elder dragons, so make sure to be wary of this when fighting a monster. It can be very useful if you are getting certain materials, as the percentages will change for capturing a monster opposed to carving a monster, and of course if you are fighting a monster that is quite strong and you want to get the quest over and done with as soon as virtually possible, then capturing is probably going to be your go-to method of ending said quest. Last but not least, we have a simple but extremely vital tip, and that is to learn the weaknesses of monsters, as well as what element a monster is, as of course this will determine what weapon you bring, assuming you're not using a raw damage type, and also decide what armor sets you should be wearing, as you don't want to be just putting yourself at unnecessary disadvantage. And with that guys, that does sum up 40 tips in Monster Arise for new players. I hope this does help out all you guys who are watching the video that are jumping into the franchise for the first time or after a very long time and remember to just have fun while you play as that is the most important thing. You don't want to read the way someone else plays and then try play like them and not enjoy the game and this is extremely vital to remember when choosing your weapon type as, as I said at the start of this video there is no best weapon type which is a general like area that many people fall off the game for so make sure you do remember that and you also don't need to learn everything straight away as there is a lot monster Hunter has to offer and i know from the comment sections of my previous videos back in the day a lot of people can be turned off with how much there is to do in a monster Hunter title as always a like would be extremely appreciated if you did enjoy it does help out the channel a ton and don't forget to hit that subscribe button for a lot more Monster Hunter content. Be sure to join our Discord, link is at the top of the description. There are a lot of awesome other hunters in there, and if you are looking for someone to play with, we would love to have you and get you set up in a squad. 
Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.